Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Coachman Chaparral 27 RKS 5th wheel. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. First, let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you are going to have a slide. You want to at least leave room for that, but you also have a pretty good size awning over here. So leave room for that to come in and out unhindered. On your off-camp side, besides your slides, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power core is going to be all the way in the rear corner. On your driver's side of your tow vehicle or off-camp side of the trailer, power is going to be there. Then your whole docking station is going to be up in this control panel. Right through there. So park accordingly so you can utilize your facilities. I recommend getting you a nice long water hookup in case your power and water are close to each other. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. Using our landing legs here, simply extend to raise, retract to lower. Once you clear your vehicle out of the way, I recommend going ahead and getting a stick on level on the side of this, put it on, have someone watch it while you bring up and down the landing legs. Once you get them landing legs nice and level, we're gonna come to the rear and put down these stabilizing feet. Okay, line this rear corner. So we're just gonna hit extend. Just gonna run them down. I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Uh, put underneath the feet of these. It's gonna protect your feet from dirt and debris and hot black top. One way, one way run down before the other. Come over to this side. Once one stops, the other one will continue until just want to run these down until you start to feel like you're going to lift the unit. Remember, our unit's already level, so we don't want to change that. If we happen to go too far, back up just a little bit. All we're doing is stabilizing it. So get, get them down. Once you got a unit level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Our power cord right here in the rear. Big long 50 amp cord. Plugs in, twists to the right, and then locks in with this washer. At the end of that 50 amp cord, you have a 50 to 30 amp amp reducer in your convenience pack, as well as a 30 to 15 amp reducer, in case you need to plug into a 110 somewhere. Get your power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. On your off-camp side, here is your docking station. First and foremost, let's talk about your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure regulator to 40 to 50 PSI. It's going to protect the lines in the unit. Always use this when hooking up because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. In our docking station, down here where it says city water hookup is where you hook up your water pressure regulator and your hose. Don't turn that hose on yet. Let's go up here to system use. For city water hookup, we want them both straight up and down. Straight up and down there. Hose hook up here, then go to your hot water heater. And all we're doing at this point is making sure our drain plugs back in. Uh, go ahead and get that back up in there. Once that's in there nice and snug, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. That's that hose been on for a little bit. You can go inside and open up your slides because what I need you to do is get inside and open up your water taps. Now, if you are coming out of winterization, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook up to city water 
We're going to open up the water taps. We're going to run everything until we've got nice clear water running through everything. Once that clear water is running through everything, shut them taps off. Then take it from water bypass to turn your water on. Then that water is going to go ahead and fill up your hot water heater. You want to make sure you get all that uh, winterization antifreeze out of there before taking this to water on. Now we're all set up. Our water's on. That's going to fill up our hot water heater. And then you can turn that on from indoors. Now if we are going boondocking. In that case, we got a two-step process. We're going to tank fill first. So this one straight up and down. The other one to the left. We're going to hook up in the same spot. Treat our hot water heater the same way. And we're going to fill up our potable water. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go inside. You're going to watch the levels of your fresh water tank. I'll show you where to do that when we get inside there, but... Once that's full, go ahead and remove that hose. Then you're gonna switch from tank fill to system use. So then this will go up, this will go to the left. You'll match that. Sorry, tight quarters. You'll match that second one back there. And then when you wanna utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water that's already pressurized. All right, we got power and water. Let me walk you through the rest of the unit, starting in your docking station. Up here is where you put in all that antifreeze. This cap comes off. Hook up the hose, turn on your siphon. Make sure you are in hot water bypass before doing that. And that you're in winter, winterization hookup, which is up and down, same as city. Down here, again, your hot water bypass. Here's where we dump our black and gray tanks. To the right, a couple of 110s. Cable hookup shows you where it goes to. Hot and cold shower. Water filters back behind here, accessible through here. So is your water tank. Black tank flush. Talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks in our city water hookup. Over here is our battery disconnect. That would disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That will come important later when I talk about boondocking and your carbon monoxide propane detector. Again, your hot water heater. Blue for your furnace. A couple of things on that. Make sure that you're, uh, it's never blocked. And also, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of it. It does get hot. Down there is where we'll hook up the dump our black and gray tanks. Also, our low point drain is right up underneath here. Coming down our off camp side, drain outlet. When it slides closed, You'll be able to reach up behind the tire and pull your fresh water drain. Again, you're out of leveling. You got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof, and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. You can also prep for a backup camera. These are both access to your fridge, and that is a vent for your microwave. Coming down your campsite, you got your big awning. You get pitch control on this too. If it's raining, you want to pitch away your, a little easier for a taller person, but you can pull that down and that'll run all the rainwater away. A couple of outdoor speakers. Prep for TV out here. Your front propane, sewage hose, satellite. Set for TV, satellite 110, you can hook that up right here. Up front, it's going to be your battery posts. Check them every now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Front landing legs. Prep for solar here. You can plug in a solar panel and that'll trickle charge your batteries. And that is just a vent for your batteries area. And that about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. All right, so coming up the side, first thing I like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Coming in immediately straight in front of you is your control panel. So down here is where we're going to check our battery. There's the fresh water button I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Black, gray tanks, uh, hot water heater if you hooked up to gas. Hot water heater if you're hooked up to electric, it does make a difference. Your water pump for using potable water. Scaring porch lights. 
entry lights, uh, gray tank auxiliary, gray tank 2 or, or auxiliary tank, main slide in, bed slide in, and living slide in. On your awning, you're only going to want to run that out until your flap falls down to 90 degrees. If you see, these will continue to run themselves out and run themselves up backwards. So when you run it out, only run it out until that flap falls down and then you're all set. Get all your control panel. I'm going to go immediately over here to my right. Door. I have my door on this hitch. In case you didn't see this lock. Lock your door back like so. So again, come down from the control panel down on the floor. Here is your breaker box and fuses. Ton of 15s in there. I recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Up here is our thermostat. Uh, dual zoned and run through different systems. I'll turn your AC on here real quick. Next is your wine guard connection for satellite. Some more lighting. There goes your AC. You can go through, turn on different zones. Turn your AC to off. Now it'll shut off. When you turn your heat off, it'll take a few minutes for the fan to cycle through before it shuts off. Coming down here, these are all lighting. This one is for your fan. That's this one here. It's more 110s. Show you quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. Put it back here, but pretty simple process. Remove your cushions. They're velcroed on. Grab the front, lift it up, hold your legs out, pull it towards you. And lay your back down just that quickly you get another sleeping quarters now remember when putting this back make sure you lift it back up first otherwise you could really damage your sofa again lift it from the middle fold this down jack my back down return your cushions and just that quickly you are back to a sofa Dinette and tables, a lot of lighting here. This is control for your max air vent over here. You can turn that on. Open and close all that from here. Lighting, USB ports, a ton of paperwork for you, a couple remotes. For your sound system and fireplace coming into your kitchen self-explanatory microwave does have a high and low vent surface light last top here makes an excellent backsplash turn on your panel light turn this to light hit your spark when your gas is on that'll light up for you so same thing on your oven turn this to light then spark it here no pilot light so just light it here and then set it to the desired temperature. A couple of 110s and some lighting over here. Your fridge, Dometic fridge. Coming up top, we are set on auto right now. So over here is where you turn it on. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift this button up, now you're on gas. If this light comes on, your gas is running low. Auto is the best thing to have it on. Uh, you got prep for TV here. Sound system, turn that on, it was on, Let's see what we've got here, different modes, yeah, just touch it instead of holding it in, turn that up, uh, we've got FM, DVD, USB, auxiliary, and Bluetooth hookup on this. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can make it dimmer or brighter. But the biggest thing, folks, is the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of 
using up your gas crank this up and I can feel the heat coming out of it already it'll get it toasty in here in no time using the camp's electricity instead of your gas heading up the hallway into our bathroom just want to mention a couple things in here one here's your 110 with GFCI reset you got plumbing to maintain it's almost all PEX nowadays just keep an eye on it no no less than you would at home Make sure that these shower doors are locked into the open position for travel. You also have a hand crank open. Power exhaust vent here. Come back into our bedroom. USBs, 110s. Prep for a TV back here too. You can put this back on a TV. Hang it here with your cable 110 there. Some accent lighting for your closet. Where you are also prepped for a washer and dryer. Closet space here, there as well. You got reading light, reading lights up here. Separate smoke alarm, separate AC. You see a couple of these throughout the unit, maybe. They're just a temperature reader, allows you to read the temperature on a unit. Helps the thermostat to work better. All right, let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. The first thing I like to do is come up here and shut off as many interior lights as I can and then start walking through the unit and shutting off my lighting. As I do, I'm making sure everything's secured. All my doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede my slides from coming in. Clean the supplies out. Last light I got is this hallway light, so we'll keep that on. Now I'll go back to my control pa panel. Turn on my entry lights just so I can see by the living room. And I'm going to start with main slide in. Again, doors and drawers, especially the drawers in that dresser down there. And that dresser, the desk. We don't need to be ripping doors off just because we're trying to close the unit up. There's one in. Let's go ahead and bring in our bedroom slide. We can see that come in. And of course from here you can see you really need to make sure those dresser drawers are closed. in I want you to hear that it's okay to hear that noise that's just a slide mechanism saying I'm already I'm all the way in don't bring me in any further and lastly our main slide over here again all the doors and drawers are on your kitchen area all right now we can shut off our entry lights and our We'll go ahead and close this bedroom door. Another door to make sure you have secure your bathroom door. And make sure this snaps open. It's set to the snap open position besides that one over there. And exit our unit. Now on these steps. Biggest thing you need to remember is to make sure your exterior door is all the way open before lifting it up. Otherwise this will catch on it. Give them a good lift. See how close that gets. Once that's inside, turn this either way to get it in there, then lock it. Before we leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt our exterior door. Lift and turn this handle. Same thing with those steps coming down. When you open your door, make sure that door is all the way open. Now, if we are boondocking, dry camping, you're going to get to this drain outlet right up underneath there that blue one there that's gonna dump our fresh water drain go to campsite we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks we're gonna unhook our power our water and our cable we're gonna to come to the front lift and lower as needed to get our hitch back on our unit and head out up to the dump station at the dump station park accordingly 
your dump's going to be all the way toward the front just in front of your tires here underneath your docking station 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack hook that up come inside here and pull body waste or as we like to call it your black tank your black tank's going to dump once it sounds like it's no longer draining go inside your unit check the level of your black tank if it's done leave this black tank handle open grab the hose at the dump station your water pressure regulator hook it up here to this black tank flush and turn that on for a good five minutes let that wash all the nastiness out of your black tank once that's done remove that hose make sure all the wash out you just put in there has washed out and then close that black handle now we're going to pull liquid waste which we call a gray tank while that gray tank is dumping go ahead and get up underneath here and open up those low point drains when those are done dumping come to our hot water heater lift up on this pressure release valve that's going to dump some hot water out of there so be careful when it's done put that back down otherwise your door won't close and then you can pull the bottom drain plug and a little bit of hot water will come out there. With those all drained. And make sure our gray tank is done. Close this handle. Unhook our hose. Pick your hose and conveniently and sanitarily. Store it right here in the bumper. And head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this chaparral for many years to come. Happy camping.